Hello, everybody. My name is Jose Vargas. I would like to talk about um, stress moderation and meditation. And what does that mean? Um, for the most part, a lot of us, we handle stress in life. And there's two types of stress. Um, there's negative stress and there's positive stress because we are never stress-free. Does anybody know what would be like positive stress? I'm going to be able to answer him. They could um type in at the bottom. Would I be able to hear them? So they'll be able to chat. Yeah, so they could chat. Um, does anybody know what positive stress is? Can they give me some examples? Well, positive stress is anything like laughter, um, someone getting married, going on a vacation. Someone Sometimes just said having a child. Having a child is positive <laughs> stress, but it also could be negative stress to the body as well. Um, we all know that when you have a child, um, the woman goes through the first couple of weeks of, of um, getting the home, getting the hormones, but it's stressful to the body but the experience itself is positive. Um, what are negative stresses? Anybody know what a negative stress could be? Well, negative stresses is anything like um, family- Someone conflict. had also just uh, wrote in a death. A death is definitely, um, uh, negative stress on the whole family um, and friends. Um, you also have, uh, let's say, you get into a car accident. Um, you know, you're making, you're working, but you don't make enough money to pay the bills. So all these type of stressors that come to our lives, there's different ways of managing it, and a lot of people find different coping skills. And by understanding the coping skills, what I would like to do is introduce to you is different ways to manage the negative stresses. Because for the most part, um, positive stress is positive stress and we don't need to manage it so much. It's the negative stress that impacts us a lot. Um, so for example, stress. Stress is a response. The body responds to stress in a way. Let me have the next slide, please. Yeah. So stress is how the body responds to an external, internal stressor. So stress could be on the outside. For example, you get hurt, you feel pain, that's stress, but also internal. So the internal stress is the stuff that we think about, the negative thinking, the, and most of the time, for most of us, we think in our own brain, right? So you have this uh, positive and negative self-talk, I call it. So negative self-talk is an example is, man, I'm not gonna be good at this job. Um, I don't know why um, I, I took it. I don't think I'm gonna be able to complete my goal. And you start thinking all this negative stuff. So automatically your emotions, they start to go up. So think about it, for example, that the body starts to respond to it like a, a pilot. You ever heard of the fight or flight syndrome? And if you did, what happens is that your body starts to go like a, like a, a pilot, right? He starts to say, all right, um, is the body there? Do you have enough oxygen? Do you have enough um, places to run? Because your body responds like it wants to run or it wants to fight. And most of the time, stressors, because you, we're not running and we're not fighting, the body becomes tense. So learning how to deal with this tension, learning how to deal with this negative stuff. Next slide, please. External stressors. Anybody that knows an external stressor could be um, pain, hot or cold temperatures. I know for me that if it's real cold outside, I get a lot of stress because I don't like to have, I don't like to feel cold. Sometimes I'm even hungry. You know, um, stresses like being hungry 
is also an issue. Um, so when we look at it, and we look at external stresses includes adverse physical conditions such as pain, hot or cold temperatures, or stressful psychological environments like poor working conditions, heavy caseload, abusive relationships. How many of us have been in an abusive relationship or, or been around somebody who's been abusive? Can anybody um, give me an example? No? Let me just see if anyone typed in the chat. It doesn't look like anyone typed in the chat. Okay. So when we look at about, let's talk about abusive relationships for a second. Abusive relationships doesn't have to be anything that's physical. It could be emotional. It could be somebody that's constantly yelling, constantly um, always being angry, um, maybe being sarcastic a lot of the times, um, and, and saying harmful or negative things to you um, can it be an abusive relationship. It doesn't always have to be a physical abuse. If you ever dealt with that, then you know that this could be psyched in your mind um, can cause deep psychic stressors. Um, and your body is constantly under high anxiety. So one of the things I explain to people that as we work on learning the coping skills, I'm gonna teach you breathing techniques and I'm gonna also discuss different ways that you're able to reduce this type of um, negative stress. Next slide, please. Internal stressors. When we work on internal stresses, we're talking about somebody that, you know, I know for some of us, you know, we get sick, there's inflammation. I know arthritis as we get older, there's a lot of worry, anger, sadness, you know, and when you, we look around the people around us, you know, as, as we start to get older, some of our friends start to pass away and we start to deal with this type of stress that makes us really feel alone, it makes us really sad. And it's important to understand that because the stresses that we feel is how we perceive the world. And because your thoughts create your feelings, your feelings then motivate your behavior. So I want you to understand this concept. Your thoughts create your feelings and your feelings manages your behavior. I'm gonna give you an example. I, I love the ocean. So I'm outside there swimming and I see a fin. The first thing that comes into my mind is a shark. So because it's a shark, my body goes into the fight or flight. My heart rate starts to pump. The first thing I wanna do is get out the water. But it's a perceived situation. So now all of a sudden I'm standing by the water and Anna comes along and tells me, Jose, look, it's a dolphin. I see a dolphin, I love dolphins. Instead of being scared, now I feel happy. So your thoughts manages your feelings and your feelings then manages your behavior. So depending on the situation, so if you're angry and you wanna get out of the room, you can walk away, you feel calm down. Sometimes you're in a situation that you're not able to get away. So what can you do to change the way you think. Breathing, meditation, I don't know um, the what you guys do to find some sense of peace. I know some people go walking. So has anybody done anything to deal with anger, worry, sadness? Can you give me some examples in how you guys deal with it? Uh, someone said walk, play with my dog. All right. And, and, and one of the things I know about pets is that, you know, if you have a, a, a pet, cat, dog, um, for the most part, it increases positive feelings. And by taking a walk with your pet, 
you know, you automatically start to feel that peace and it takes you away from dealing with the, the stressors. Now, does anybody know the, the difference between acute stress and also long-term stress? Next slide, please. As you look at the slide, you're going to see acute stress is a reaction to an immediate threat. Anything that's happening at the moment. So I know that, have you ever experienced those loud trucks coming by and all of a sudden they beep the horn? It's so loud that you jump, you jump up and you're wondering, oh man, you know where this came from? Um, I know um, walking in, in a crowded area for some people can be stressful, especially when it's a lot of pushing and shoving. Um, for me, hunger is something. If I'm hungry, forget about it. I'm angry. So I know for a lot of people, hunger could be an issue. Um, how about danger? You know, what is danger and how you perceive danger? Sometimes you're walking at night, you see something um, like a small animal, you don't know what it is, or you hear noises and you, you perceive danger. So automatically your body goes into this fight or flight and you become stressed out. Um, and understand that when I say stressed out, I'm talking about anxiety. I'm talking about, you know, your heart rate pumping. I'm talking about like really, really feel nervous about it. Um, Cause stress, you know, encompasses a lot of situations. So I just want you to understand that we're talking about negative stress. Um, infections, you know, have you been sick and you're feeling down, your body's reacting to it. You know, you feel depressed. You can't really work um, as you used to. You can't really do the things that you did before. So what happens, acute stress comes to us in the moment, in the now. And um, when on the last one, it says imagining a threat, right? Or remembering a dangerous event. A lot of us, you know, we've been through situations in our lives that, you know, sometimes if you think about something, all of a sudden you have this, um, like a flashback and your body reacts like if it was really happening at the moment. So understanding that acute stress is things that happen now in the moment. Has, does anybody have an experience that they would like to share about something that happened to them that can cause an acute stressful event? Anybody? Uh, someone said crowds. All right. So how does um crowds make you um stressed? Can you give me an example? I know for me, I get a little um anxious. That's what he said. Anxious. And how do you normally deal with your anxiety? Oh, now I can see um, the chat. So let me have the next slide, please. So when you, it says I usually leave or try to go to a different time. All right, um, that works for me. I usually get out of the situation, get out of the, the crowded area. I go someplace else. Sometimes you can't, you know, if um, I know when I go to the city and there's a crowded um, subway, it's hard. And especially now that, you know, we have to wear masks, it makes you feel more suffocated, um, makes you feel more stressed out because you're not able to breathe fully. So one of the techniques I wanna teach you is gonna be deep breathing exercises and I'm gonna guide you through the whole process. Next slide, please. So chronic stress, also known as long-term stress, is um, you know, working in an environment that's really, really stressful, you know, heavy caseload, um, don't have the time to finish all the work, um, being pressured to, to meet certain deadlines. And so this becomes stressful for a lot of people. Um, long-term relationships. You know, have you been in a long-term relationship that, that was stressful, that was always constantly 
in a situation that you felt like, man, I got to get out of here, you know? Um, so finding those ways and understanding that chronic stress starts to creep into your body and slowly start to break you down. When you think about chronic stress, it attacks the immune system. That's why when people are, are have long-term stress, they get sick, a lot of colds. Have anybody been in, under like a long-term stressful situation that they were getting sick kind of easily? How about loneliness? I know that a lot of people feel lonely, especially as the world starts to change and, you know, we start to move around. Any, anybody dealing with any physical ailments that constantly have them going to the doctor, the hospital, or anything like that? So when we respond to stress, the body, like I mentioned before, goes through the fight or flight. And what happens is that it, the example that I have, it says, um, next slide, please. Um, it says, a person sees a bear, sends a message to the brain, which activates a release of steroids, hormones, including the primary stress hormone called cortisol. I know I have a lot of people heard of it, and cortisol is like one of the main um, chemicals that we have in our body that causes a lot of issues. Um, weight gain, um, it also, uh, it breaks down the immune system so you can get sick more. Um, so understanding that as your body responds to releasing these neurotransmitters, um, like a, adrenaline, dopamine, um, then what happens is that this adrenaline flow through your body, you start to feel really overwhelmed. Um, and, and if you don't have an outlet, it builds up and it stays constant. Next slide, please. So the long-term effects of stress, you, your immune system breaks down. So let's think about the immune system. The immune system is white blood cells um, that protect you from germs and viruses. So if you don't have enough white blood cells in your body to prevent from getting sick, you're more likely to get sicker. You get colds faster. Um, you're not able to fight off um, bacteria or things of that nature. So your body automatically feels run down. Uh, you're tired all the time. You don't feel like you want to get out of bed. So understanding that by dealing with long-term stress and not doing nothing about it, you're actually breaking down the body so it could be more susceptible to diseases and getting sick faster. I know um, I met a coworker of mine that she was constantly getting sick and I realized that she was under stress you know, in her personal life, also um, at work and her immune system started to break down. When she started to take care of herself and doing like holistic activities, she was able to start to feel better and was less sick. So. One of the things that I want to talk about is ways and how to manage stress. And, you know, we speak about moderation. Who, who drinks alcohol? Anybody? Jennifer says sometimes. Okay. So when we think about it, Jennifer, um, sometimes when we're under stress, and I, and I know people that are, they drink a little bit to feel relaxed. So what happens, you take a cup, you feel relaxed, you feel good. The next day you get stressed again, you take another wine, you drink another glass of wine, maybe a beer or so. And slowly your body starts to get used to the alcohol to deal with the stress. And that's how people start to get, like I said, addicted to the alcohol. 
but it's important to understand what moderation is. Let me have the next slide, please. Okay, I'm, go back one. The one before that. All right, so thank you right there. So then what happens is that moderation is, a, is an important part of um, taking something, consuming something that can potentially make you addicted to it. Um, so having, you know, Jennifer says she drinks sometimes, that's fine, sometimes it's good. Um, if you drink something on a daily basis, then it becomes an addictive thing. So understanding that drinking alcohol is not a, a positive coping skill to deal with stress. For the moment it works, but then what happens in the end it doesn't. Next slide, please. So burnout, when you're dealing with burnout, what happens is that your body um, starts to get so tired. Um, and remember I mentioned the, the white blood cells? We also have red blood cells. And the red blood cells are the ones that produce, that bring the food, um, the oxygen, and, um, and it needs iron for it to survive. And for some of us, when we have too much stress, we're not eating appropriately. We're not taking care of ourselves in a appropriate fashion. So your red blood cells starts to decrease and you feel tired all the time. So these are the things I want you to look out for when you're dealing with stress. Now, some of the symptoms that um, come from dealing with these disorders, right? Um, you have chronic fatigue. Anger. I know I met I met people that are always angry because they're so stressed out. Um, self criticism. You know, you put yourself down. Um, why you're not good enough? Why this can't happen? Why you know always these things happen to me? Um, become you know irritable easily. Somebody says something, you get you snap quickly. Um, exploding for no reason. You know, I don't know for you, but I know that sometimes that if I'm so stressed out, I could easily explode. Um, quickly. So I learned that by managing it through positive exercises um, and deep breathing exercises, which I'm going to guide you in a few minutes, um, I'm going to walk you through this nice um, progressive relaxation so that way you can help um, use a tool to relax. And have anybody dealt with like stomach pains, headaches all the time? I'm pretty sure that, you know, these things happen. Anybody have like stomach issues? So when you have stomach issues, are you going through a stressful event? Um, do you hold your stress in your stomach? Because if you think about it, a lot of us hold our stress some part in our body. Some of us hold it in our shoulders. Some of us hold it in our head. Some of us hold it in our stomach. So what happens is, um, you know, when you deal with stress in that way, if you're, if you're not feeling good, if your stomach is not feeling good, there's no way you're going to feel good. So learning to reduce that. So I'm going to walk you through a, a deep breathing exercise, um, which is, you know, having a balanced lifestyle. Um, are you guys ready to um, to do this? Are you sitting comfortable? And uh, because I can't see you guys, right? So, um, all right. So, if you like the park or the beach, I want you to close your eyes and think about the park or the beach, and listen to my voice. I want you to take a deep breath. Hold it and let it out nice and slow. I want you to take out another deep breath, really deep, hold it, let it out nice and slow. Take another deep breath. I want you to hold it, 
Squeeze all the muscles in your toes. Relax. Stick and let it out. Take another deep breath. Hold it. Squeeze your calf muscles. Relax. And let it out. Take another deep breath. Hold it. Flex all your back muscles. And relax. Take a deep breath. Hold it. Squeeze your chest muscles. And relax. Take another deep breath. Hold it, make a tight fist, squeeze with all your might. One, two, three, and relax. As you breathe normal, you're sitting on a beach. You could feel the cool air, the sun, you can hear the birds. As you grab the sand with your fingers, you can feel it run through your fingers. And as you open your eyes, you feel your body nice and relaxed. Take another deep breath. And as you breathe out, you breathe out all the stress. Can anybody give me any feedback on how they feel? Jennifer says more relaxed, a little relief, calm. Yeah, I can see I can see them the text is now. I think I fixed it. Um so when you do practice these things. When you're feeling stressed out, what happens is that you're able to deal with a lot of stuff that goes on. Um, another thing is exercise. You know, I don't know, taking a walk with the dog, taking a walk with your friend. Um, and as you walk, what you want to do is increase your heart rate a little bit. So that way you can let out some of this negative stuff that we experience throughout our body. And if you practice a little bit of deep breathing every morning, right before you start your day, what happens is you start in a better frame of mind and you're able to cope with the stresses around you. Um, I know there's people that love to read. Reading helps people get away from, especially if you read that positive things. It helps you get away from a lot of the stuff that goes on. Um, and also proper nutrition. As you start to understand Proper nutrition helps your body heal faster, um, helps you feel better. And if you're working on weight management and things like that, understanding the type of foods that you could eat. Some people have diabetes, understanding you know the, the do's and the don'ts of what foods you could eat. Um, but one of the most important things that I want you to understand, and you know, when I say spiritual exercises that I have up on the board. Um, spiritual exercises could mean anything. It could be from religion to just, you know, being outside um, in, in, in a nice flower garden, um, maybe um, in a nice park, um, being one with the world around you. And, and, some, and we got to think about that because when we think about our values, when we think about our belief systems, our values and belief systems is what provides us with how we see the world. And if we see the world in a negative way, then most of the time we're going to be stressed out. If you, you know, when we turn on the television, I don't know about you, I have it on the news. The first thing I hear is a whole bunch of negative stuff. So I try to listen to the weather and shut off the, the news right away because I don't want to hear 
the negative stuff because I don't want to start my day in a negative way. Um, so when you look at your belief systems, I want you to think about it. How does your belief system, how does your values impact your daily day, your daily way of living? And practicing um, positive coping skills, exercising, deep breathing, meditation. Um, for some people who don't know how to meditate, I'll, I'll give you a, a small, easy meditation. Um, meditation is a way of clearing your mind and Part of what we did before, the deep breathing, you could also focus on one thing. Um, some people call it a mantra. Um, some people call it um, a, a phrase or a philosophy. So for me, what I do is when I focus and, I, and I'm meditating, I breathe in um, love, peace, happiness, joy, good health, abundant wealth, and prosperity. And, and then I let it out so that way what I believe I would like to receive, I want the world to receive as well. So it becomes a way of learning how to change the negativity that goes on on a daily basis and looking at how we view the world. Do anybody have any questions about um, meditation? Have anybody ever meditated before? Well, meditation should take um, as long as that you want. For the most part, what I tell people when they do the meditation, um, you could do it for starting off two, three minutes, because I don't know about you, I have a busy life, so taking a long time, um, it, it'll take away from the things I got to do. So meditation doesn't have to be too long. Um, you could start off with two, three minutes, and you could work your way up to 15 minutes. Some people do it for hours. I don't know if that's feasible for, for me, but for the most I meditate for is like 15 minutes. And that's all I need to start my day. Um, I focus on my breathing and I breathe in and I breathe out and I just focus on that. Um, another mantra that I have is um, I, I believe that um, the one that I just explained to you, I breathe in love and I breathe out love. Um, another one that I say is um, be still and know God. Um, so there's a different ways of finding a phrase that you enjoy and create that phrase, make it simple. And when you breathe in and you breathe it out, you could do that for two, three, four minutes. And after that, you start your day. Um, any questions on meditation? Another thing too that um, humor, laughter, that's something that, you know, I, I like to see um, comedy shows that make me laugh. So laughing is something that keeps you going. Um, you know, so I enjoy laughing with people. I enjoy laughing with friends. So watching a comedy show is something that will relieve a lot of stress. Um, you know, if, you, if you're sick and you have to take medications, making sure you take your medications as prescribed. So that way your body doesn't go into some form of stress internally. And also, um, you know, at the end of the day, if you have a friend that you can share some of your stress, they could, you know, you could vent to them. And if you don't, you know, finding a counselor or a therapist to help you deal with some of the stuff that goes on that we're not, we're not able to talk to other family members about. Any questions? Well, I would like to say, um, I would like to thank you guys for joining. Um, this is the first time I held a, uh, a Zoom seminar I'm, I like to do it in person and um, and it was hard because I couldn't see anybody and I couldn't really talk to you guys but I appreciate your response and your um, chatting online with me 
Um, hopefully next time Anna sets something up that we could do something face to face. Before we go, any questions? Thank you guys. I appreciate it. Anna, anything? <laughs>